I think that's something that if you're an artist, you don't ever walk away completely from. It's always there. It's not something you can just go away from. It's in you, and it has to come out. I have had periods in my life when I was intensely interested in, in um, Indian culture, and so my work reflected that for a number of years. I, I also have a, a huge affinity for nature, um, from landscapes to sculptures that are made from found objects to, um, to creations that involve um, feather, fur, leather, beads, rocks. Uh, all those things are, are part of my life because of me liking to be out in nature. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I've, I mean, I've done so much stuff over the years that it'd be hard to keep track of it all. Um, one of the things I discovered for myself as far as uh, making, creating art is that it's always better for me to work in a series uh, because that way I can explore an idea a lot more thoroughly than if I just did one thing. And my process usually is that, so that an idea will occur and come into my mind and then I'll toss it around in there for sometimes it's weeks, months, sometimes longer, and then it finally comes out that I just have to go out and try it and see what happens. And I found that while I'm creating something, um, even though I might have an idea in my mind what it's going to look like, it, I find the process changes that. And so I have to change with what the process allows me to do. Um, and I have found that I've gone from everything from painting uh, through all kinds of different sculpture works. I, I got involved in making a series of sculptures that I call the Cassitic series. Uh, this came about because I, for many years my wife and I would travel in the summertime to Taos, New Mexico to visit some friends of ours. I came up with the idea of, the, of these little houses called casitas that would, inside of them, hold uh, different life forms from that area. Uh, this other series is that I want to talk about, one is called the Southwestern Desert Sculpture Series. And this was also an outgrowth for that same time frame, my love of the desert and the idea of taking um, some of the life forms and then through um, making them three-dimensional uh, uh, and adding with them all kinds of patterns and colors uh, to help some of those critters get lost in the sculpture itself. I happen to be a colorblind artist. Uh, one of the things I found out about being colorblind is that, that while we don't see colors like everybody else, we are very sensitive to values and, and so we're, it's light and dark contrast things that uh, might fool most people because they're concentrating on the color, even though when you look at it, you see that there's two really strong contrasting areas, the sky and the desert ground that surrounds it. Um, those two colors, the background in the desert and the sky, are actually the same value. So if you were to look at a black and white photo of this sculpture, you would lose that whole differentiation between those two colors. And I like to play with um, people's minds that way because I'm always getting a raft of, you know what, because I'm colorblind. So it's kind of fun to throw it back at them. That's what I like about that sculpture the most. I've only known one, um, one other person as an artist who's colorblind, and he was my mentor, my very good friend to this day, Don King. Uh, he lives in New Mexico right now, but we used to joke about who was the worst off. I never admitted it uh, until I was halfway through uh, uh, art school to anybody. Even my own grandkids are, you know, it's, it's, it's intriguing to them that you can't, you can't tell the color. For a, a number of years, I really got involved in making uh, masks, uh, specifically gourd masks, and they were inspired, inspired largely by um, Native American masks, a lot of which I have seen up in Seattle and in Portland at various museums. Um, one of the things that I, I really liked about these masks was that they were com all completely made of natural materials. And a lot of times it was the shape of the gourd that, that kind of dictated what I, what I needed to do. As I found this a lot of times when I'm making my art, that the, when I started on something I have a good idea what it should look like, but as I start working with the materials, they sometimes say, no, you can't do that, you've got to do something else. So that leads it to another series. It's called Organic Nest Forms, and these came about um, again, from my love of the desert, I've found through hiking there that I've come across huge fields, like covered hills that are covered with all kinds of forms that are separate. They're, they're not uh, coming out of the ground. They're, they're heavy. They're sandstone. And they take all kinds of strange shapes. And some of them, to me, started looking like a nest. It was like a round half spear with a hollow round place in the middle. <coughs> At one point, I was asked to take part in a, in a show, a, a sculpture show, revolving around Valentine's, no, Easter it was, that's right, Easter. 
And so everybody was doing some kind of Easter basket and, you know, the nest idea with the eggs in it. And so I came up with the idea of using one of these forms and the, um, uh, the eggs were actually round sandstone pieces. I, I believe these things are called concretions. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they're formed, but they are very organic and, and they're lots of fun to play with. So that spurred this whole um, series. And since I was calling them nest forms, I had them kind of growing out of some kind of a tree branch that, that I had you know, embedded in some more stone. And it looked like this nest was placed inside of the, the tree branches. Uh, and then I started adding patterns to the branches to make them a little bit more decorative and a little bit stranger to contrast between the natural form and then the added um, painted on texture. So that leads it to another series. I call it the alphabet series. What I was going here with was the idea that that these were um, three-dimensional brush strokes. And at the time I did this series, and the, another two series that followed, um, I was fascinated with the idea of trying to take a very, just a simple, like load up a brush with some black paint and just slam it down on the paper and taper it off. And then try to turn that very vigorous brush stroke into something three-dimensional. So I started uh, working around that idea uh, and came up with the focus being uh, perhaps to start trying to tackle the alphabet, though each letter being made out of the um, brush strokes and then a background also made out of other brush strokes. So the, the whole piece in the end is maybe only like four inches deep, but it's layers on top of layers and it creates a bigger depth when you look at it. And um, they're also done very painterly, I would like to say, with the backgrounds with a lot of splattered paint and to reinforce the idea of the brush strokes. And I think I ended up doing, uh, I think, let's see, X, Y, Z, and V, and an A. So I didn't get to that much further in th that series because another idea popped in my head and off I went on that.